Welcome to the Sex Ed for the Modern Bed Show with your spicy hosts, Tara and James. Today, we show up every episode to expose, uncover, and share what we know about SEX. This isn't what you find in your typical sex ed class. Juicy sex talk is under discussed, and we're doing what we can to change that. Sex is evolving. People are empowered more than ever to detach from the cultural norms and design the sex life they crave. And hey, if you're looking for more after the show, we invite you to get social. Our Instagram is the.sexed.show, and we would love for you to give us a follow. In our busy lives, it's easy to get caught up in work, responsibilities, and the never-ending to-do list. Often, the first casualty of this hectic lifestyle is quality time spent with your partner. If you can relate, then keep on listening. We're here to remind you of the importance of setting aside dedicated time for date nights and the amazing benefits they can bring to your relationship. On today's episode, my co-host Sylvie will not be joining us, sadly, but I have a special guest who knows a thing or two about the magic of date nights. Please welcome my partner, James, to the show. You can say hi if you want. (laughs) Hi, babe. (laughs) In this episode, James and I will dive deep into the various aspects of date nights. We'll discuss how they can reignite passion and bring back that spark that might have faded over time. We'll explore the positive impact they have on communication and emotional connection, allowing you to truly understand and connect with your partner on a deeper level. And it's not just talk. We share real-life stories and experiences of how date nights have positively influenced our own relationship. We'll provide practical tips and ideas for planning creative and memorable nights together, even if you're on a budget, and we'll address the potential challenges and obstacles that could come up when trying to prioritize date nights and how to potentially overcome them. Of course, we will end the show with our Q&A segment with some burning questions we've had from our listeners. And with that said, I think it's time to get started. I also want to take this time in the spirit of reconciliation to acknowledge the traditional territories of the Indigenous people of Treaty 7 Region and Métis Nation, Alberta, Region 3. I had the chance last night to talk to somebody who was part of one of the tribes who was at the Calgary Stampede. And for those who haven't heard of the Stampede, it's been happening since 1912. And every year I find that they have more and more involvement with the Indigenous people and they're doing more and more to really foster reconciliation. And so this person was telling me that he's having a ceremony today and they're transferring, the family's transferring the teepee to him and his family. He's taking it over from his elders. And it was really cool to just hear about all of the different ceremonies that are related to that and that these ceremonies are still going on today. He also shared a lot of great information about like some of these teepees are 300 years old. It's insane. I didn't know that. Yeah. And he was telling me about how every symbol means something so that people could tell where these people who were in the teepee were from and if they were friend or foe. So I just felt really like blessed and grateful that he was willing to share that story with me last night and I wanted to share it with my listeners. We also like to start the show with our somatic inquiry. So if you want to participate in this, please listen up. And if not, you're welcome to just give this a little fast forward. This one is called Noticing Our Own Experiences. And it's basically just kind of tuning into your body. It's kind of like a body scan. And yeah, if you're wanting to participate, just inviting you to maybe notice your breath noticing where your breath is landing at the moment, maybe closing your eyes if that feels good for you right now, and just tuning into your body. Are you sitting? Are you laying down? Are you standing? How do you know this? Do you feel something under your bum, a chair? Do you feel pavement under your foot if you're walking? What sensations do you notice? What's present for you? Are you noticing the temperature of the air around you? Are you noticing if you're warm or if your hands are cold? Are you noticing a movement in your body or is it really still? 
Are you noticing fabric or clothes that you're currently wearing? Or jewelry even? I'm curious what emotions are present for you. Curiosity listening to the show? Excitement? Maybe you're listening with a partner and you're a little bit apprehensive about what might come up. And what thoughts might be present for you right now? Are you eager to move on? Wanting to get this done? Are you enjoying this simple 10, 20 second inquiry to really tune into your body and notice what's going on? Hmm, just taking a few more breaths here. And welcome, James. Thank you. How are you showing up today in the world? I am showing up in a capacity that is a night after Stampede. Yeah, we just had a date night. Yeah, we did. <laughs> and uh, like Tara said, if, uh, if you don't know about Stampede, it's supposedly the greatest outdoor show on earth. And first off, they've changed a lot, which made me a little upset. But um, I got over it with a little bit of, uh, you know, the naughty water. And uh, <laughs> it was uh, a really fun time. Let's just say that. Yeah, it was. And I mean, it's really nice that our city has something like this because most of the time it's kind of boring. Boring. <laughs> we don't have much going on. And so this is like 10 days of real debauchery. Like everybody goes wild. People are out every single night. It's it's pretty crazy how how many things are offered during it. How many things you can do, like not I, even, but not even just on the stampede grounds, like all over. That's the what I city. mean. Yeah, I was gonna say I've done four stampede outings, and each one was different. We went down to one of the big party tents, which wasn't even on the grounds, which is new this year. Yeah, and this was the one at the back alley, the yeah. Badlands tent, and we went and saw Our Lady Peace, which was another date night that we did. Yeah, which was a lot of fun. Me and Tara grew up listening to Our Lady Peace, and we've even had like nights where we just you know stood around and had our like in person date nights in the home, like like a stay in one where we would just dance and listen to music. And Our mm -hmm. Lady Peace is usually on the playlist. Oftentimes, yeah. oftentimes. It was actually a really fun event. Yeah. And that was like one of the, that was the first night. And so everybody was in really good spirits. The vibe was great. The tents didn't smell like puke or yeah. piss. Yeah. The Yet. toilets were still reasonable. <laughs> um, and then the second one, I went without James down to the grounds with my friend who has a kid. And we kind of did like the kid experience. And then our third experience, we went to the rodeo one day and that was an impromptu date night we kind of like got tickets that day and spent the day down there which was really fun which by the way you don't have to get tickets in advance for the rodeo and stuff because there is a lot of standing room in the front which is really nice if you just want to have a few drinks watch the rodeo from like ground level it's mm -hmm. really nice there are seats that are up higher they're quite expensive oh yeah the stampede can be insanely expensive it is like capitalized it's <laughs> capitalism at its finest it was an eight dollar corn dog yeah yet it was an absolutely delicious corn dog it yeah and so it's definitely not easy on the pocketbook and we we're calgarians so we know every july this is happening it's something we budget for being local we get access to some of the discounts and stuff so we tend to take advantage of that we probably should have taken more advantage of that this year because i didn't think we would be going this much but it was wild this year it was people are calling it cowchella cowchella or stampe stampede cella i've never been to coachella so i wouldn't know the difference so i would say that stampede is just stampede for me and it's funny because me and tara grew up in calgary and we used to go to stampede all the time as a kid and there's tons and tons of things to do for kids there so it's a great family outing sort of event i know that sometimes dates and your family don't necessarily get involved very often but it is a fun time to get out with the family and do those sort of things as there is tons of things to do not let alone just on the grounds which again costs money to get into and that sort of thing mm -hmm. but there are things all over the city that are going on pancake breakfasts if you like pancakes 
there are 10 days of pancake breakfasts that are free. Some of them you have to pay for, but most of them are free and you get pancake breakfasts all the time. So there's a great date night idea is going to get pancakes during Stampede. Yeah. And date night doesn't need to happen at night. <laughs> it can be the morning. It can be brunch. It can be anything. Rodeo during the day. And like the importance of setting aside dedicated time for date nights in a busy schedule, like it's so like we're both very busy people and we've realized over the almost 10 years we've been together how important date nights are and when we were really when the lifestyle was a huge part of our life and we were doing stuff every weekend we also had to make a a pretty big effort to show up for ourselves and do date night together so that we could stay connected stay connected and bring it back home And, you know, COVID changed some of that. And I think we're like really starting to figure out what that looks like again for us and what date nights look like. And we try and plan at least one a week where we're spending quality time together and planning something together. And one thing to know is like quality time isn't like going to the grocery store together. And okay, hold on. And doing chores. But wait, together. wait, wait. We had to have that hard conversation yeah. once or twice or maybe a couple times because in my mind, spending time together is quality time together. If it's just us two and we're going grocery shopping, in my mind, right, that was quality time. But we had to have that hard conversation that for Tara... Well, it wasn't really a hard conversation. Well, I, okay, I wouldn't say hard, but it was a conversation that we had to have because... We had to clear it up and gain clarity with what each other's perspective was. Because I'm sitting here going like, we're spending all this time together. Look at we did this and this and this. And Tara's like, but that wasn't what I would consider quality time. Okay, can I introduce like something I saw in one of these Facebook groups that I was reading? Absolutely. So it's a polyamory one and this person has a primary partner that they live with and then they have other partners outside of that. Right. And they go on dates with the partners outside, you know, they plan to go for dinners, they go to movies, they might go out to like a market night that they find. And then the, their primary partner was getting a little bit of jaded because they're like, you're not spending any quality time with me. And this person's like, well, we cook dinner together. We go grocery shopping together. We clean the house together. And this person was like, yeah, but that's not like Those the are same cho- thing. Those are chores. That's not quality time. And so now do you maybe see why? Oh, that- if, oh no, of course. After our conversation, I totally see it because, again – this is always these conversations that we we feel as a like very connected and open couple that we have to have these conversations to understand how the other one perceives quality time how the one perceives receiving gifts how one perceives like the five love languages how you perceive each one is going to be different even in the erotic blueprints how i would perceive a shapeshifter or how i would perceive sensual is not the same you would perceive sensual so having those conversations really got us to understand that the, the importance and setting aside time for those date nights to be able to have that quality time that both of us feel like we are getting into that quality time and having those times together where we can, again, like you said, show up for each other. Why do you think that quality time and, and planning these date nights or date days is important for a couple? Because we get lost in our every day-to-day life. Yeah. And you get so lost in the grind of going to work, coming home, and then it becomes that routine. and Gets habitual. Oh, it gets that. It's like every day it's the same thing. And then it's like – and then it's the weekend. And then usually for most people, they probably have something planned on the weekend. Like they're going out with friends or they have dinner plans or they have something. Or they have a to-do list a mile wrong. Or they have things that they have to do for their kids. If they have kids or around the house. Exactly. And so you end up getting lost in all of the things that you have to you like, I guess you wouldn't say have to do, but these are the things that you need to get done, you know, for your everything to kind of be copacetic, everything Mm -hmm. to be kind of running smoothly. And you forget about your partner almost. You forget about dating each other. Yeah. And then I feel like the spark kind of 
fades. And it's funny because when we go on dates together or do things that aren't the to-do list, let's say, there's times where I like look at you and I'm like, oh my God, I'm having so much fun with you. And I feel like that, that like... Spark again. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, you're such a fun person. Like, I'm so happy that I'm doing this with you. And I also feel lucky that we're able to do that and that we actually prioritize that in our relationship. And the more that we do that, the more I find like we're almost on the same page because we still like we talk a lot on our dates. Mm -hmm. We check in. I did a podcast with Sylvie about mindful dating Mm -hmm. with the polyamory with Dr. Marie. And she touched on like checking in, like how, how am I doing like leading up to this? What's my body feeling like leading up to the date? What's my body feeling like on the date? What am I noticing after the date? And like, even though you've been with somebody for 10, 15, 20 years, you can still check in with yourself and see what's like, you can use it to really learn more about yourself and your relationship and maybe things that need to be talked about with your partner. Well, and growth, like you end up growing even with your partner and you get, and you gain more perspective on their lives because things are always changing and like you said like i said before things are always kind of like this habitual pattern that continuously Mm -hmm. happens over and over and over again and like i said you can get lost and Mm -hmm. yet once you kind of push past that and you go back to like that dating and that fun maybe you get some new nre coming back into your relationship you get some new some new feelings that are like oh like and like tara said that spark that really you know, which drove you to be together and want to be together and spend time together. Cause you know, even for myself, it was, I always wanted to find somebody that was like my best friend that we could go hang out together and we could still have sex and it would be greater. <laughs> it would be better and all of those things. But when we started to slow down and actually realize that we weren't, cause we were so busy when we were in the lifestyle back before covid and we were yeah we were doing podcasts and every we were, day it was and we were doing something and oh, it yeah. was either organizing the next event or it was or what we were doing in a week or a month and it was just the calendar filled up so fast that like you said we had to stop ourselves from like pushing ourselves so hard that we would go to these events and it we would even go into it and we would say to ourselves like our pre conversations before we would set up our you know our agreement kind of for the night mm-hmm. and it was like you know i'm not really feeling connected towards yeah. you so i don't really want to play and and especially for the when it comes to the lifestyle i feel that these date nights bring back like you said back to home and that's really where your relationship should be is always in that home space. And if you want to extend it out there, that's great. But the home has to be stable and healthy healthy for you to want to extend past that. There was a thing Dr. Sex with Dr. Jess said when we interviewed her long, long ago. And she said, you know, date nights and doing these things are really important because as a couple, when you're like facing the world, like you're facing it. Like, and I have my hands right now side by side, right? You have your kids there. You have your pets there. You have your bills. You have all this stuff. And you're like pointed out facing that together to the world. And so what date nights do is it kind of helps you face each other. And so now my hands are facing, the palms are facing each other. And it's bringing it back to you again. So that like, it's great that couples are power couples and they can do all of this stuff and push, 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 but you really have to bring it back home to you and your relationship and really nurture that. Well, I think that brings on a little bit of like chaos within your own relationship and it can, it can start to drive wedges in between. And we've seen it happen specifically in the lifestyle when people don't have that outlet, that extra outlet to kind of bring it home that their relationship started to suffer and mm-hmm. 
we find it just to be super important. And I just want to make a note that we are doing this inside. If you can hear the kids outside playing, we have a neighborhood full of kids. And if I can hear them in the headphones, so can you. So I just wanted to point that out. We're just happy they're not inside on their iPads. Yes. But anyways, (laughs) back to the date nights. Yeah, I just think it's super important to just be there with your partner and experiencing things. Because I think that that's also such a powerful thing that when you have something to talk about because after yeah. 10 years yeah right like we talked about this after 10 years we have talked so much let alone on the podcast let alone in life let alone all three of, years of covid right and we we talked we've talked so much that it's sometimes hard to come up with new topics to talk about with each other and yeah. majority of the time we get that off of like you know, TikToks or Instagrams or things that we want to share or TV shows that we're watching together. But I find that date nights also give you something extra to talk about yeah. within your own relationship, which yeah. gives you more spark, which gives you more connection, which leads, which might lead to something that you're looking forward to. You know, I was just about to bring that up, actually, of like, do you think there should be an emphasis of sex or intercourse or getting sexy with date nights or like is that an expectation that should happen I like that you bring that up because I find that sometimes myself specifically used to put an emphasis on that like I wanted I had a goal to achieve at the end of the night which was have this connection have these things and then I get my sexy time at the end of the night yeah and I already know all this and, about you. But right? But I'm bringing we, it into this podcast. We we talked about this and it's funny cuz it like Tara goes, so now you have a goal or you have something that you want to expecta- achieve. Expectation. And to be fair, are you just doing this portion of like our date night to just get to this? Mm-hmm. And sometimes for me it was a yes. Mm-hmm. Like And I still, of course, I love spending time with you and like, you know, I obviously want to get married to you and I want to spend the rest of my life with you and that sort of thing. But I always wanted it to end with sexy time because that's one how I felt love. And and I then we start, I I, I guess I grew up a little bit (laughs) and I had growth. I think you deconstructed and started reframing what date night was and the intention of it instead of the expectation. Exactly. And I never wanted to go into it with an expectation because I just wanted to have fun with you, Mm -hmm. my partner. And I kept kind of putting sex always on the table and penetrative sex in that sense. And for me, that was, again, if you go back to any of our old episodes, that's how I perceived to feel loved. And it doesn't always have to be that way. I think the connection and the, the sort of time you spend together and that sort of thing is in a sense still sexy and still and intimate and kind of you know makes you feel really good and if sex happens at the end now it's like sweet awesome Mm -hmm. but it's never never going to be the expectation going forward because like i just like spending time with you and Mm -hmm. i think that there's so much growth in that. And even if we don't have sex, there, you know, we get some cuddles in, we maybe watch a movie, do something like that at the end of the night. It's still kind of for us, like, and it's still that build up maybe to the next time or yeah. the next time. And it still has, like, yeah. that sexual tension is not going to go away. The anticipation. And there is couples who specifically do plan date nights because they want to and have, like, a date on the calendar where they're having sex because they might have kids and responsibilities a lot of responsibilities and they don't have like the access to that freedom of doing it whenever you they want like we do more you know yeah and so everybody knows we don't have kids we have a dog and three cats and that's hard enough enough to plan yeah (laughs) as it is yeah because we don't like to leave the dog that's just how we run our thing for a very long period of time i did start to notice with the expectation of sex for date nights i i noticed that i was starting to experience like anxiety even though i want to have sex with you and it's amazing and i have fun doing it 
It was too much pressure. That's what I was about to say. There's like this inherent pressure that's like, oh, it has to end this way for yeah. us, for either myself or yeah. for you to feel like I'm happy with the date or and then f- for you, it was never like. I don't like sex as an expectation or pressured sex. It just doesn't feel good to me. I can't feel sexy. But everybody's different. Everybody's right? different. Yeah. And, and like, so if that's how you have to do your relationship and that's how you have to get sort of like, again, set aside that time for dedicated sexy time. Well, then, you, you, you know, you have to do it. Well, and have a fucking conversation about it. A hundred percent. Be like, how do you feel about this? Do you like feeling like on date nights, we are going to have sex. Do you like to have a date on the calendar, which is date night with sex? Or is that too much pressure for you? Or is spontaneous sex and like the shower in the morning or something where you like yeah. surprise me or something when the kids aren't home and we have those times and it's not really planned or anything. And that works for so many people because that's the way that they have to do those things. Like we said, like, or like Tara said, there's so many responsibilities that you have in your everyday life and you can get lost in those, all those responsibilities. And I, I don't know. I love having sex. I think it's great. And so I, I, I would love to get there and, but I like spending time with you. And if it does lead to sex, that's just more of a bonus. Yeah. And you kind of touched on something there The the exploring the role of surprise and spontaneity in date nights and i'm type a so i fucking (laughs) plan everything so for us to go to the rodeo last week or this week and that was spontaneous that was in the morning we made that decision at like 9 30 10 a.m we flipped a coin by the way yeah we flipped a coin and you know what that was like that was so fun and I think when you st- you're starting off in a relationship, there's way, there's a lot more spontaneous things that are happening. You're like, oh, I just got off work. Hey, do you want to come meet me for a drink or some after work appies? Um, and as you progress in your relationship and the duration of being in a relationship extends, I feel like that spontaneous stuff kind of doesn't happen as much. You're not taking those weekend trips because you're not living together. Well, you kind of have to plan it, right? Because you don't know like what somebody might have next weekend or the kids might have or... But what I'm saying is also be open to the spontaneous aspect because that can also cultivate a lot of eroticism. That can cultivate a lot of reconnection. And I, I don't, I hate to say more than a planned one, but in different ways. Of course, of course. And everybody's going to, again, experience those things. Like Tara said, she's an A-type. She doesn't like surprise parties. She's not necessarily 100% on board with things that aren't planned out. And it doesn't have to be to a T. Oh, here, I have a good idea. What? So for keeping things spontaneous, you can switch back and forth. So like, for example, James could be in charge of a date night for the week. And I don't know anything that's happening and it's kind of up to him to plan. So it's kind of spontaneous for me. And then the next time it would be my turn to kind of plan something. If if like having access to really spontaneous date nights is a challenge. That's just a suggestion I have for folks. Absolutely. And I think that that also creates a little bit of... I always like to bring it back to NRE because we have it so much in like the beginning of your relationship and it's when it's so new and it's so much fun and I was having a chat with somebody in the in the smoke pit last night and they were they've been together for like three weeks and oh my god you know started and, in stampede <laughs> well no before right before oh, stampede lovely but, you know and then like I was talking to them about how they met they met through Bumble and it was this really cute story and anyways but I was just I was talking about how it was like how is the connection how are you guys mm-hmm. feeling and it was and it was weird because I was. I, I was a little, as I said, I had a little bit of naughty water and I was going down this path and this, these two people were super nice. I had no idea what you were talking with them about (laughs) because I was with our friends. I'm like, what is this guy? And I'm like, I'm just going to leave him be. And they were, and then they were talking about how they like second time they had date night. She hurt herself in the car because they did it in the driver's seat of the car and it was just it was so much fun to hear the story, but I could just see the NRE in both of them and it was just like. 
And I, I and I, like honestly, I was like, I just kind of want some of that like new relationship kind of jive in. And That's then why the lifestyle is so alluring, yeah, and absolutely. exciting, yeah, is because you're always getting a little taste of that NRE, even though you've been in your primary relationship for. 10 plus years yeah and experiencing new things and new yeah. adventures and then yeah. new stories to talk about new things to kind of dive deep into your own self about like how did you feel during this and and it's so much and i find like i said there's so much growth in those moments that you can just and then you can get back to that feeling of feeling sexy and because i know a lot of people like we're watching we just watched a, a queer eye that was talking about yeah. how like you know, she just, this person never felt like she had that sexiness about her. She was a principal of a middle, of an elementary school, right? So, like, there wasn't many moments probably for her to be sexy, but she didn't know really how to cultivate that and bring that forward. And I just thought it was so cute how they, they you know, you build that up inside of you and then you see her three weeks later and she's glowing because she's experiencing new things and she's got new dates and she's going down this NRE path. And I I love it. I love it because it's, it's something new. And when you have that in your relationship and mm -hmm. you have something new, that's like more adding to that NRE that's adding to that, you know, already deep connection that you already have with mm -hmm. your partner. And it, and it, and it creates these great moments for sure. Yeah. It's, it's, and, and okay, so one thing I kind of want to touch on with the date nights and planning and stuff, you know, sometimes gender roles come into play and that's an obstacle that couples face is a lot of times if you're in, you know, somebody who identifies as a woman, somebody who identifies as a man relationship, you're going to experience perhaps the weight of patriarchy and thinking that the woman is supposed to do more of the emotional labor of planning these, planning the childcare, planning where they're going to go for dinner, planning how they're going to get there. How are they going to get home? Are they going to be meeting anybody on the way? What time do they need to be home for the babysitter? Do the animals need to be fed earlier because you want to leave earlier? Does anything need to be cleaned? Does somebody need to come and check in on the animals? Like there's so many different moving parts, uh, moving parts and I'm, I'm not trying to call out all men here, but typically I find that that responsibility falls on the woman's shoulders. In, and in hetero relationships. In hetero relationships. And that can be exhausting. I feel personally attacked. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But We've yeah. had this conversation though, James. <laughs> yes, of course. I know. That's not... Like... <laughs> And I see it on TikTok where mm -hmm. women are literally in tears because they feel so overwhelmed with having to plan all of this. And they're like, why can't I just have my husband's role of where he just is like, oh, okay, I'm going to shower t 20 minutes before and I'm going to leave. And, and then he gets to enjoy this wonderful date night and hopes to get sex at the end of it. And it's like, I think that there needs to be more awareness that, and it's equally shared of labor. Of the emotional labor. The emotional labor. Yeah. It's a real thing. Tara talks about this with me all the time about the emotional labor because. Well, what do you have to say about it? Well, you, you have taken on most of the emotional labor as being the A type. And I've kind of sometimes, and to my own fault, sat back and had these moments where you've planned everything and I've done little and I know that I should be doing more and I know I probably should extend that out there and sometimes I just forget that there's so much that goes into the little things yeah and I just I have taken had to take time for myself to process that and ask sometimes to you how can i be supportive in this moment of what can i take care of and i know i hate that question though James. I know. that's so loaded and you're literally taking that and giving it back, back to that to, to to the person and that's not fair i think the solution for that is thinking in your own brain what needs to happen mm -hmm. what could i do oh okay well we're leaving at six Usually the animals are fed at five. So 
I'll feed them at five and my partner doesn't even have to ask. Or, oh, I'll get in touch with the babysitter because I know we want to have a date night and I'll hopefully get her that night or him or them, whatever. But I think it's like not putting that on the partner yeah, because it's it exhausting. It's so exhausting. And just like taking a little bit more initiative of the planning process and what goes into planning these date nights because it's going to get to the point where the person who's always doing everything is not even going to want to do these and they're checked out and they're not fun anymore. It's just one more thing to do. To worry about. And we don't want date nights to turn into one more thing that somebody has to do. Which goes back to a good point that you made earlier about like some one person planning the date night and the other person the next week planning the date night. And in that sort of spectrum of planning the date night comes all of these things, right? The babysitter, the somebody coming, checking on, on the animals if you're going to be away for... Checking out some menus of restaurants. Right. Making reservations. reservations. All of it, right? Like, And so taking on the responsibility of planning the entire date night gives you also the spontaneity aspect because some people might not know what's going to happen and they just kind of go along for the ride, which is always a great fun experience to go down that path. Like people like myself, I really enjoy kind of flying by the seat of my pants and going down that path. But it also... Like Tara said, I think it kind of takes the emotional labor off the other person so you can fully enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. The gender roles can be a real issue. And I see it coming up with, you know, new parents who are trying to plan that time for themselves. And the mom's like, I'm already under so much pressure with this new baby and all of the things that I have to be responsible for right now. Trying to plan a date night and make that work with this new baby in the picture is they're, they're don't, they don't even want to do it. They don't even want to go on a date night because it's just too many things. It's just adding more to the plate that's already full. But that's what's going to cultivate that strength in a relationship. And if both people can show up for each other in equal or not even equal, but show up for each other and not expect the other person to do everything, that's going to foster the connection that you're looking for from these date nights. Really and truly, that helps. It really does. Well, because you get to enjoy it. Like I said, you get to you get to kind of let that thing off your plate and a, a less full plate. I think you get to enjoy more things. So you get to add more things and not in that sense of like having to do more, but mm-hmm. like add more things to that plate of enjoyment. So of if, you're, fun. if you're listening and you're like, oh, I've never had to think about this stuff. Maybe, maybe it's you time <laughs> that you should. And if you're listening and you're like, oh my God, this is how I feel. I always have to plan and be responsible for everything. When we go out on date nights, maybe have a conversation with your partner about it and let them know how you're feeling and give them some examples of how they could step up and ask them to for your next date night that you have planned. I think, yes, have the conversations because sometimes... Like we all want to think that our partners know exactly what we're thinking at all times. And sometimes that's just definitely not true. And having that conversation and, you know, breaking down the things that need to get done, especially to go on a date night, you don't want your partner to be stressed going on date nights. You want your partner to be kind of relaxed and enjoy themselves. Like I said, you want to have that moment where you're, like you said, standing there and looking at me when it's like, oh, this is so much fun. Yeah. Yeah. And another obstacle I find couples face when it comes to like date nights is technology. Are you going to be sitting on your phone when you're at a restaurant together? How does that make you feel even when I say that? Is that connection? No. I mean, you could be doing that at home. Yeah. And that's not. And even... Well, we do we do have a little fun with our TikTok for TikToks sometimes, yeah. which is great because we get to kind of get... But that's not something that we would bring into a date night, when, especially when we're out of the house. Exactly. And so also noticing what you feel around technology and distractions and it can be sticky. There's I do see people out on their phones on date nights and I'm like, wow, that's no judgment, but I... To me, that doesn't feel like it's it's a lot of connection. No, and like I said, you want to have 
deep, meaningful conversations. I love those because yeah, that, but we had like phone free nights where like no phones when we go out. I we haven't we have. done that in a while, we but haven't. we haven't also pulled out our, the only thing that we ever really do to pull out our phones is when we're, Taking when we're pictures. out, just take pictures. Yeah. Just to try to capture some moments. But yeah. I don't think that we've ever sat at like a dinner table and whipped out our phones and like either started scrolling through Instagram or, or if we're on a, at an event Facebook or a or... certain thing. It's a little more challenging uh, when you're doing a date night in the house, I would have to say. Or you run your own business. Yeah. <laughs> but, so, but I yeah. mean, being being aware of what what's your line for that? What are you okay with and what are you not okay with? And making that agreement together as a couple too. Like you always say, set the container. Set, set the container. And then I yeah. think that everything flows from that. Like yeah. we want to go out and don't get me wrong. We don't say like don't ever use your phones. Obviously you want to be in contact with either the babysitter or whoever's looking after your children or animals or whatever. Yeah. That's, like we're not saying put it on do not disturb and just, you know, completely cut yourself off. But also be aware yeah. of just pulling your phone out in the middle of dinner to check something or whatever when that can really break the connection and kind of break the flow of your evening. Yeah, I agree. Um, so what are some ideas for date nights or date days that people could do and maybe try and think of for, for reference, we are pretty budget friendly as I'm a student almost graduated. I'll like, yeah. So we've had to be really budget conscious with our date nights. Um, Unfortunately, I wasn't during the stampede. <laughs> cringe. But... <laughs> but yeah, no, I think that one thing that we lo I think is a great date idea and just just go for a drive. If you have a nice like scenic place to go to, like we are kind of blessed being close to the mountains yeah. uh, and we have taken date days where we just – Made a drive out to Banff or Canmore and, you know, went to one of the microbreweries out there or, you know, one of the nice places to eat yeah. and you're in the mountains and you could like going for a hike is always a very cheap and inexpensive way to, you know, get together and yeah. go see some beautiful places. And if you're looking for like it to be more budget friendly, like bring your own food, bring some yummy gourmet sandwiches we also, like, I also think vacations are really healthy for you to do as a couple. And we don't have access to that very much right now because we need to be careful of a budget. And so we do, like, camping, which is not as expensive as going on a trip, getting an Airbnb, flying somewhere. It's still a nice break for us to disconnect from our phones to do stuff together like we're it's just us for three days and in nature and doing something different and, and if, adventuring and if you're not budget conscious then get a hotel room yeah in like either a different town or a different or a city but somewhere where you know you can go out for dinner plan the reservation come back to a hotel room because hotel room sex is always the best sex <laughs> <laughs> And yeah. I think that those are always fun things to do, especially like just like a picnic in the park. Yeah. Like a nice park where you can go and sit down, relax, people watch. That's always a fun thing to do. We also, before COVID, we went a few times for massages somewhere that was a spa. And then afterwards, we would spend a few hours in the spa doing like the whirlpools, if they have a cold plunge, the steam rooms, getting some tea from their little like complimentary thing. And it wasn't that expensive. It was, you know. Um, no, you got to look for the spas that have those extra amenities. Yeah, or look for like Groupons and stuff like that. But that was really fun to do. We did mm -hmm. that a few times and that was a blast. Yeah, use your health benefits for a date night idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Feeling really... And, you know, if that's not something that you have access to, doing that at home. Like, during COVID, we did... I was... I saw the memories on Facebook where we did a spa day. And so we did, like, face masks, a hair mask. We, we did each other's feet, like a little pedicure. We had a shower together. We put the diffuser in the shower. I mean... 
wasn't that expensive, but it was reconnection time. Listened to some good music, had some cute playlist on, like. And you can do, and you can still do all of this stuff inside your own home. Like we just had a day today. Well, we had last night, which was a fun time, good time. <laughs> but like even the time we had just now, and like sitting in our backyard. So we have a nice little setup in the backyard. We got some nice flowers. It creates a nice little environment. We got kids screaming next door, which doesn't necessarily add to the vibe. But it's always good to just like have those moments where you can just decompress and sit with each other. I, and... I feel like that was quality time. I think for date nights, the intention has to be there for the container like what is the intention for this date night we're gonna go out we're gonna go to the rodeo be spontaneous have fun we're gonna go to a nice dinner we're gonna connect we're gonna go for a spa day and relax and not have our phones with us and like kind of chat about what's been going on for us i think we're gonna go camping we're gonna be in nature we might microdose a little bit mm -hmm. and go fishing and and enjoy life in nature. I, I think having the intention when it comes to a date night is really crucial for it to feel satisfying and to hit that, that button that you're looking for in your relationship. So as we're talking about, like I, I just kept thinking, I'm like, we have a lot of really budget friendly date ideas that we can just go do at any time, anywhere. One of them is going to, but it's, it's a little river beach that's down in a park way out. And it's kind of like a little trek to get there, but it's a nude beach. Yeah. Cause there's no police activity and Canada is pretty liberal when it comes to nudity, but it also is a very budget friendly. We only have to drive like, you know, 10 kilometers. I don't know what that is in miles. <laughs> and, you know, we park in a parking lot and we take a backpack full of some stuff and we go down to this beach and we get to swim and we get to be open and free and that's super budget friendly. I think there's a lot of things that I think we get caught up a lot and I do specifically because I, you know, I'm kind of a cheapskate, but <laughs> I think that we get caught up a lot in spent thinking that we have to spend money to have a good time capitalism or... makes us think that self-care and date nights have to be extravagant lavish or... and you have to spend money on it and that is not the case at all no it doesn't it, and it's like again we've had date nights where we literally d do song for song and k dance in our kitchen yeah right like little things like that we made dinner at home that's it just and then again like we've been talking about this whole thing, set it up that way to where, you know, hey, honey, I, I want to, we're just going to put our phones down tonight. I think a great time would be, it's like, we're going to, we're going to order in from our, one of our favorite restaurants, you know, a little skip the dish, DoorDash, Uber Eats, whatever it happens <laughs> to be, you know what I mean? And we're going to, you know, have our in-house, very, you know, cheap, inexpensive. We like to plan places where we get to two, three meals out of a meal type deal. And I think that that also kind of brings it back to like we keep talking about bringing it back to home, bring it back to where because a lot of some people aren't necessarily comfortable out there among other people, which is totally fine. And I think that home is a very comforting place. And I think there's a lot of times you can be a lot more of yourself when you're in your home. You want to scream, you want to yell, you want to dance, you want to sing, you want to do whatever you want. I think that, again, kind of comes with it. And I think that those are great moments. And I think think that just taking that time to focus on that pleasure moment i think that's what will also cultivate and some... the intention yeah exactly should we get into these questions yeah if we want to dive into them quickly do you want to ask the first one well we should take a quick commercial break and then we'll be right back And we're back. <laughs> God, I missed that. I haven't done that in a very long time. I know. It's kind of nice having you here. I miss Sylvie, but it's a different dynamic when I'm doing a podcast with you. It's always, I think we always have so much, so much fun and then we talk about so much stuff and then we start to like learn. And it's fun because we learn about each other even just in these conversations because we start 
just talking and that that just yeah it's so much fun anyways i love spending quality time with you in front of the microphone let's just say that yeah i do too okay so the first one is how often should we have date nights is there an ideal frequency this makes me remind of that episode we did with uh, the people who did the lick test oh yeah and they talked about this they said that you know try to aim to have one date night a week and try and do like a weekend kind of thing every three months and try and plan like one vacation at one to two vacations a year that you're taking alone not going to somebody's wedding not bringing the kids with you where there's no agenda of stuff you where have to you do you can connect yes yeah and that kind of resonates with me i i do feel like that's healthy all, all i can say is, is everybody's but, gonna do their own thing exactly i was do gonna what, say do whatever. whatever you want to do if you want to do a date night every single night and you want to plan that out i will say that probably isn't sustainable <laughs> I well think i think it, it'll lose its the le- that that the, yeah that luster and you the wanna, luster yeah, yeah like <laughs> Like the reason why you're doing is to kind of change things up. So, and and if you're listening, you're like, wow, one a week sounds like way too much pressure. Then one every two weeks and make it really special and put some real intention into it every time you plan it. But I again, I think this also is one of those things where I think you, you have that conversation to, and then again, set the set the set the time of frame and whether it's once a week or once every two weeks and just try to stick to it because i think that like i said before we get lost and caught up in those day-to-day hustle and bustle and we forget about these moments that really really cultivate such a strong connection as a couple and if you're looking to let's say go outside that and you want to explore more in the lifestyle that'll make it easier when you have that connection and that deep connection yeah because i never counted lifestyle nights as date nights. As date nights. No. That was something we were doing for our own individual selves. It was something we were doing for our relationship, but it wasn't a date night together because there was other people. There was a lot of external force, and like not force in a bad way, but just a lot of external stuff. It wasn't the internal stuff that we were cultivating. Exactly. Question two, what are some unique and creative date night ideas for couples who have been together for a long time? Ooh, I really am a fan of sitting down and like making a list of brainstorming ideas. And oftentimes I'll find... Google it. I Google like fun things to do in Calgary. And then I'll go through and I'm like, ooh, that's cool. Or fun things to do in Southern Alberta. And I'm like, oh, we could drive out and look at the stars or the aurora borealis um and i make a list of things and i have an ongoing list that i'm always adding to for date night ideas and uh, i just i don't want to stop you because you're on a roll but also you should both partners in the relationship should have their own date night ideas don't just rely on one person to make or work on the list together together yeah but i think that coming with a list from one and coming with a list i think that also gives you that sort of communication and that sort of thing where if that's not something that you really want to do well okay then i I, we we don't have to do that that's just something that maybe i wanted to do yeah like go to like a sports game like a hockey game right which we still both have and i'm like i want to go to the ballet or we went to like what was that celtic dancing where you got covid Oh, I don't even know what the heck that was. It, oh. it was some, anyways, it was some. <laughs> uh. But this is what we do is we like find unique and different things around the city. We look for like night markets that are going on in the summer. You know, Stampede is kind of like one of those things that comes through once a year. And well. so we try and plan stuff around that. And like eventually we'll probably get to going to to like like beer tasting things that are happening, you know, like, or an even an outdoor festivals or even like an outdoor rink to go just for a little skating. Yeah. We, we obviously need to get skates and I think I need to get my skates tuned, but going skiing one day, like exactly. We just, we kind of have an ongoing list so that when date night is there or we're like, Hey, we need to plan. It's not so much pressure 
of like thinking and you're like, oh my God, I can't think of anything. Like just have an ongoing list and you're like, wow, that sounds really cool. Somebody told you about something that they went and did and you're like, oh, I want to go and check that out. I want to go try that. Well, and that okay. restaurant out. So you just brought up a great point and this is a great tip for anybody who's going on vacation and is going to do things is, is that planning does take away from the pressure. It takes away from having to, in the moment, be like, oh, what do you want to eat? What do you want to do? Do this, blah, 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 blah. Go do research about the restaurant, this, that, and the other. When you're on vacation, you don't want to have to think about these things. Yeah. So the genius mind of Tara <laughs> and myself, I wouldn't call myself a genius, but <laughs> what what we do is, is we'll look up some of like, really good restaurants yeah. in different places and we'll just make reservations and we might make it for four or six people and you can always adjust it. You can always cancel it, but there's something there and it takes away the pressure of having, like I said, sit there oh and, my God. Oh, and you know how the, before when we you're this, hangry and you're like trying to find somewhere to oh eat and you're in a new gosh. city and you're like, uh, fuck it. We'll just eat here. And it's like a mediocre meal when there's so many other places to go or, or to go see, like, you're like, I don't know what to do today. Like, do you want to just go to the beach again? Like first time we went to new Orleans, that exact same thing happened. But Tara had a list of all the restaurants that were nearby our hotel and all the different places that we could possibly, what type of food it was, what kind of, what did you want? Yeah. And I think we were jonesing for like a shrimp po' boy yeah. and some fried oysters. Yeah. And we knew exactly where to go and just walked in, got a table. And it was great food. It, it it avoided like sometimes the implodeness that can happen when a couple's hangry and on vacation and a little bit stressed out. And like, I don't know where to go. And oh, uh, doing a little bit of pre-planning in that way, just like. It saves you. It's, it can save an entire vacation, an entire yeah. trip yeah. of not having to bicker or fight or do anything. And everything flows a little bit smoothly and you end up. Or the emotional labor. Exactly. It's already, it was pre-done yeah. when you were in better spirits and not hangry as fuck. <laughs> okay. Question three. Hmm. We kind of touched on it. What are some tips for planning a memorable date night on a tight budget? We talked about a few different options, I feel. Focus in on the little moments. That's just a big thing that I can say. Even if you're not doing something significant like a lavish dinner or whatever, right. just take those moments in those in those moments to be like, this is really nice. I like spending time with you. We should do this more often. Last question. How do we handle situations when one partner is not interested in or enthusiastic about date nights huh. that's hard that's tough um i think why and, and conversations yeah. you need to why? have why some, are you, you need not... to have some real big conversations about what what why are these things what is holding you back from experiencing something are you like is there already too many pressures from other things you know, maybe it's the gender role thing that I touched on of maybe she's not feeling into date nights or enthusiastic about them because there's so much on her shoulders that she has to plan. And the thought of having to plan all of that just isn't worth the date night. Maybe he's really busy at work and for him to like come home at 6 p.m. and then have to get ready and go out for a date night just seems like one more thing to do and maybe they have just not maybe they just really feel like and again it doesn't even have to be gender specific it's just it's just sometimes you just aren't feeling it and that's totally cool but i think breaking down and having that conversation and trying to understand your partner like hey i've noticed that when we are going to plan a date night you recluse into yourself. You don't or... really seem interested in in it or really like excited about the date night that's coming up. And I'm just wondering what might be going on with that. And they might not even know. They They're might not like, even. Oh, I thought. Okay. Well, they might not even see it that way. Yeah. They might not understand like, no. what do you mean? Like, I'm, we're there. We're doing it. It's not like I'm not here. And it's like, but are you really here? Are you really enjoying yourself? Are you yeah. getting the full effect of what this Maybe date Maybe they night... don't want to be spending the money. Maybe they're is. like, this doesn't seem like 
this $200 date night isn't something that's really interesting to me. And then maybe you start planning, get, getting creative with date nights that you're not spending that much money on and exploring what that might look like and if things change for that person. I got an idea, which is a great tip. What? So we've played this game. It's not necessarily a game, but it's kind of like a, a fun thing to do with your partner. And what you do is you say to your partner and you allow them to go through this process without like speaking and you kind of just at the end of it say thank you. But let's say describe your perfect ideal date. And then my, so my perfect date would have to be April 17th. <laughs> It's not too hot. It's not too hot. <laughs> not too cold. It's not too cold. <laughs> if anybody knows what that movie is from, what that's what movie that's from, put it in the comments. Yeah, section. yeah. Give me a thumbs up with that one. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, I think that that's also a good idea. And then you can expand off of that of things that because a lot of times in date nights, if you feel like there's pressure or there's other things going mm. on in your life to be or able to... it's not to... your cup of tea. Right. And it's like, like I said, like doing something sporting wise, not necessarily your cup of tea, but... It... I still have fun at You it, still but... have fun. Yeah, I know. But I'm just saying for yeah. me, I get more enjoy about it. Like, like going... you going to the ballet. Yeah. You get more enjoyment out of that than I do. Yeah. But I'm going to go because that's something my partner and I respect that she wants to go do that because... And I'm not saying it has to be, again, we try to avoid this whole tit for tat thing. Like I do this for you. You have to do this for me. Yeah. Right. Don't, don't, don't start doing it that way. But what I'm trying to say is I think that if you break down what your perfect ideal date was and not like an actual date, but like a date night, <laughs> I think that you will be able to understand your partner a little bit better. Yeah. And I think you can both cultivate a night where you're both receiving what you would like out of the date and what like the intention. And I think that you can grow from that and expand on it. Like saying, well, my ideal date is like, let's say staying in and watching a movie. All right. And well, getting pegged. <laughs> or that. But I think that it escalates quickly. You escalated that quickly. <laughs> But then maybe the next time you say, okay, why don't we go out to dinner and a movie and go out to a theater to watch a movie? Then we're getting out of the house. We're not staying in the house. And we're, we're doing something different, different a little and, more spontaneous. Yeah, and extending that. So I yeah. think that you can also cultivate date nights around personal preferences for each individual. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm also saying you're gonna have, we're going to have to compromise a little. I'm not saying you have to completely like shed everything you don't want to do mm -hmm. and just go do something you really don't want to do. But I think you just create that little environment to where you're both doing something that's going to, you know, make you happy or you're going to have that compersion aspect knowing that your partner is going to be enjoying every minute of it and you're still going to get joy out of it because you're seeing your partner in a very happy and enjoyous environment. Yeah, I like that. It's a really good thing to keep in mind, but I think it all comes down to communication and maybe asking why the person seems disinterested or what's going on in them. It might not even be about the date night. It could be shit that's going on in their lives. It's not always about you. Don't and take it personally. Date night, it might be, I don't know, but just having a conversation. And if you're struggling with having those conversations, you know, perhaps finding a professional that would do that does like somatics like I do somebody that offers therapy or counseling so that you can establish that foundation where you can have these conversations together and it doesn't feel like you're attacking each other and it doesn't feel like you can't talk or share truly what's going on um, having that space and holding that space for each other is integral and that's step one of of having date nights that really feel intentional and valuable and really help to grow your relationship even if you've been together for 5 10 15 20 25 years like you it's, it needs to be prioritized so what you're saying is communication is key yeah pretty much <laughs> so anyways thank you to all of our listeners and sylvie i miss you today but I was able to bang one out without you. So can't wait to have you back on the show, my love. Bang it out. Bang it out. 
Thank you to all of our amazing listeners for tuning into the Sex Ed for the Modern Bed Show. If you're looking for more ways to connect and access info, please get social with us. Best way to find us is on Instagram. You can look for our show at the.sexed.show or our individual Instagrams at sexed for the modern bed for me and sex and sensibility for Sylvie, the E in sex being a three. Thank you, James, for filling in for Sylvie. I was I, about to say, am I just chopped liver here? <laughs> Do I, I not? I really <laughs> appreciate, I must have felt that in my body. I really appreciate you jumping in and having this conversation. I miss doing these podcasts with you. And until next time, claim your pleasure, own your body, and stay in presence.